that way. It's amazing what you can find when your eyes are open. Think there's a troll under it? There always seems to be a little adventure kicking around. All you have to do is look for it. Let me share a secret recipe. Discover an ingredient that fires your imagination. Choose other flavors to match. Find the best way to cook them. My secret recipe? Cooking without a recipe. Gabe and I were out hunting for trolls today. We checked every bridge in the neighborhood, and guess what? Our mythical quest succeeded. But the fun doesn't have to end here, because your kitchen can be a place of exploration too. You know, we all have to answer a simple question every day. It's actually my favorite question, what's for dinner? Because around here, the answer is always an adventure. So what do you want for supper? That's a pretty good choice, Gabe. You like all that colors in there? Yeah. Right, you hold that, spaghetti. okay? Gabe in the kitchen is an adventure in itself, but even when he's not here, this is still a playground for big kids. I guess it's my turn to pick something for dinner now. Obviously a pasta sauce. But of course, I won't need a recipe for that. Not that there's anything wrong with recipes. I'm actually inspired by them all the time. But at the end of the day, the recipe writer and that guy you saw on TV, they won't be coming to dinner. So instead, try stirring your own ideas into a recipe. And a pasta sauce is a great place to start because with ingredients like these, tomatoes and clams, you can't go wrong. But keep in mind, a great sauce has three basic parts, a body, a base of some kind, some garnishes, and something aromatic. Now these are definitely the body today, and to aromatize that sauce, I'll definitely stir in some onions, some garlic, but for a garnish, I always like to stir bacon into my clam sauce. Now normally I would use olive oil to brown off these onions and garlic a little bit, add some extra flavor to them, but since I'm gonna stir bacon into this sauce today, I might as well take advantage of its flavorful fat and use that fat to brown off the onions. Now for maximum flavor distribution, I'll chop these up nice and small. Now that may look like a lot of onion, but since I'm gonna brown this a bit, its flavor will concentrate. It'll actually shrink down quite a bit. Now one nice thing about adding the onions at this point is that all the moisture in them will dissolve all those little brown bits on the bottom of the pan. I think it's time for some garlic. So at this point, I'll simply stir the garlic until I can smell it, until it gets to know all those brown flavors. It's time for some tomatoes and clams. You know, when I'm making pasta sauces, I actually prefer the ripe flavor of canned tomatoes. And even though I live on Prince Edward Island, I prefer the convenience of canned clams. Now this is a perfectly good red clam sauce, but you can still play around with some herb flavors if you like. Now any dried herb will add instant personality. So ask yourself, which one do I like best? Which one would I like to try today? Then pick one and go for it. Rosemary, fennel seed, oregano, basil, or even a simple bay leaf. This will add a nice aromatic base note to this sauce. But actually, my favorite herb is in the fridge. Fresh basil. But I don't want to ruin its bright green flavor, so I'll stir this in later. Actually, it's time for Gabe's snack. 
unholy bread, of course. Now, if there's anything in the world you don't need a recipe for, it's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Gabe's a pretty curious fellow, kind of like his proud dad. We were out looking for trolls before and found one hiding under a bridge. Maybe I'll use this sandwich as troll bait and see what I can catch in the backyard. That looks like it'll do the trick. Everywhere we looked today, Gabe and I found lots of adventure. Hey, there's a toy down here! And I've continued the hunt in the kitchen. Your kitchen can be full of adventure, too. Just take a deep breath and leave the recipes behind. They're a great place to start, but you don't need them to finish with flavor. Gabe decided we were having pasta for dinner, and Daddy decided to experiment with a red clam sauce. After browning bacon and onions, I added garlic, canned tomatoes, and canned clams. Now, if you're into kitchen adventure, a great way to find it is to look at an old familiar ingredient in a new light like Parmesan cheese. It's usually stuck in a salad or pasta bowl, but who says it can't make an appearance at dessert too? Certainly not me. Let me show you an incredibly rich grown-up treat with an Italian edge, Parmesan vanilla cream. Your friends might think this is complicated when they see it, but it's really just a little flavor adventure. It's nothing but cheese melted into some flavored cream and chilled. That's it. Let's bring this up to the simmer. This is an end of the meal treat because of the cheese. So a good way to balance that cheese is with a touch of vanilla. Now is the time to add an aromatic ingredient to balance the sweet vanilla with the savory cheese to come. A strong spice like cinnamon or nutmeg would work but so will the woodsy aroma of rosemary, which goes quite nicely with the flowery essence of vanilla. And while it simmers, it will quickly infuse the cream with lots of flavor. Okay, let's get this cheese ready. Roughly a cup and a half or so works best with a cup of cream. Now before I add this, I'm gonna pull that rosemary out. It really doesn't take very long for the rosemary to infuse the cream with flavor. And now that the cream is simmering, I'll simply add the cheese. Just stir it a little bit at a time until it melts and then add some more. And as soon as you can't see the cheese anymore, it's done. Just pour that in here. and then simply refrigerate it until it's nice and firm. Now here's an adventuresome treat, oysters. You know, the first guy that ate one of these must have been very brave, but what's life without a little adventure now and then, especially in the safety of your own kitchen? I have to admit, sometimes there are some pretty strange things on my shopping list. For instance, I really love moldy old milk, otherwise known as blue cheese. There are two things that will turn you off to food in a heartbeat, and surprisingly, taste isn't one of them. Instead, perception and texture play a much bigger role than flavor when your mind decides whether you're gonna like something or not. I can't tell you how many guests I've met who rave about foie gras until they realize it's duck liver. Sometimes ignorance is bliss, but perception is not always reality. I've also talked many a squeamish friend into trying their first 
Oyster. Usually, they can't get the second, third, and fourth one down fast enough. But if I've learned anything as a chef and a dad, it's this. Don't mess with texture. Gabe will eat elephant ears and shark eggs, but if I don't leave his favorite spaghetti sauce just a tiny bit chunky, or if I substitute chunky peanut butter in his favorite sandwich, well, let's just say that having a three-year-old food critic at the table is always an adventure. Now, I like to serve oysters as simply as I possibly can. Frankly, I prefer them with nothing but what Mother Nature gave them. But a little lemon juice is okay, too. Mmm. Oh, I'm feeling good now. I wonder how that Parmesan cream is feeling. But doesn't that look like ice cream? I think this needs a savory syrup. When it comes to savory syrup, nothing is more adventuresome than authentic balsamic vinegar. The good stuff is thick and powerful, but it's also expensive and rare. Fortunately, it's easy to jack up regular balsamic vinegar with a bit of honey and a touch of reduction. You'll find that combining three or four parts balsamic vinegar with one part honey will give you the best results. And don't worry, you don't have to measure for this to work because it's the next step, the reduction, that really makes this sing. Think of it this way. The honey is already syrup thick. It's the water in the vinegar that has to go. And when it does, the flavor will stay behind, which is really what true balsamic vinegar is all about. But that takes mother nature years. You can approximate that flavor, though, in your own kitchen in just a few minutes. So reduce it down until it's nice and thick and powerfully flavored. Cool it, and who knows? It just might look like chocolate syrup on vanilla ice cream. Now that's an adventure. There's adventure around all of us, all the time, especially if we see the world through the eyes of a child. And then can we go back and see the soul? And if you leave the recipes behind, your kitchen will fill with adventure too. So today I've stirred adventure into a red clam sauce and a rich Parmesan cream complete with a savory syrup of balsamic vinegar and honey. Now, nothing looks better next to a bowl full of pasta than a bright green salad. Now, I must admit, this is not usually the first place I go to prep a salad, but don't worry. I should be able to fit it in here somewhere. like Senor Caesar, who just might be the world's most popular salad. So let's see. I'll need some romaine lettuce. Some bread for croutons, grilled croutons. And of course, my homemade Caesar salad dressing. Begin by zesting, juicing, and squeezing a few lemons. Take a look at how much juice you end up with. Then add roughly twice as much olive oil. Next, add a spoonful or two of Dijon mustard. It'll add sharp flavor and help the oil and juice combine smoothly. Then, toss in a few cloves of pungent garlic and a splash of Worcestershire sauce. Then a few heaping spoonfuls of grated Parmesan or Romano cheese for rich body. And then the anchovies. Ah, yes, the anchovies. Purely optional, but purely flavorful. 
the kind of ingredient that tastes great even when you don't let on that you're using them. The choice is yours. You can add as many or as little as you'd like. Now, I don't know about you, but I come from the fill the bowl with flavor school of salad making and not just dressing lettuce and croutons, I like a little bacon action too. But not just any bacon, pancetta, Italian bacon. In fact, I'm gonna make some bacon crisps to garnish the Caesar with. And because pancetta is normally sliced very thinly, it crisps very quickly. Now for these croutons. So to prep this ciabatta bread for the grill, I think I'll just open it up and brush it with lots of olive oil. Great bread already is properly seasoned with salt, but it wouldn't hurt to add a little bit of pepper flavor. Let's get grilling. Smoking hot, that's what I'm looking for. Now when you're grilling bread, just think of this as a great big toaster, which in essence is what it is. But I'm also adding the unmistakable flavor of the grill, that smoky essence, the great outdoors. Okay, let's put all this together. Actually, that grill is still smoking hot and there's no reason I couldn't add some grilled flavor to romaine too. I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do, which is actually very simple. I'll brush it with olive oil, but unlike bread, romaine lettuce doesn't have salt in it. So of course, a little bit of salt and some pepper. This is gonna be grillicious. I love grilling vegetables, and romaine really is just another vegetable, but it is kind of delicate, so I guess the idea is to get it on the grill and get it off the grill pretty quickly. Well, it looks like it's ready to flip. I guess I'm just gonna have to trust my instinct on this one. It smells great, actually. It sort of reminds me of a burning leaf pile in the fall. Just cut that core end off first. It's kind of tough and woody down there. I'll just cut these in half. That'll work. Now for the croutons. Now for that pancetta. That could use just a touch more color. I love the raw pungency of red onion and salads. It's not too sharp, but it's got a lot of flavor. And ah, yes, one more thing. Some Parmesan cheese. This is a great way to garnish any salad. Look at that. Now, doesn't that look amazing? I can't wait to eat this. And oh yes, I still need to fire this colored spaghetti. for a little adventure in your world, you really don't have to go any further than your kitchen, especially if you think of recipes as a place to start, not to finish. Like this Caesar salad, for instance. I've made Caesar salads hundreds of times, but I never thought to grill the romaine before. Now this Parmesan cream is looking good too. Now I've never actually finished this with balsamic honey syrup before but I know this is gonna look good. That looks really cool. It looks exactly like an ice cream sundae. I wonder if Gabe will go for it. We'll see how adventuresome he is today. And I'm looking forward to finishing off this red clam sauce with some bright green basil flavor, which I always add at the last second to preserve its pungency. Look at that. 
Red clam sauce, basil scented. Okay. Now, of course, I'm not gonna rinse this pasta off because I want all the starch that's on the surface of it right now to stay right where it is. It'll help the sauce adhere to it. Red clam sauce with green, orange, white, and red pasta. And just for kicks, I'm in the mood for a garnish tonight. Basil with basil. Likes a little basil on his too. Let's see how this turned out. I want to try some of that basil. Perfect, it's still nice and bright. You know, you can fill your kitchen with adventure too. It's easy. Just leave the recipes behind and let your imagination run wild. But remember, keep it simple and have fun. Because after all, the best cooks are curious cooks. This is my favorite, Daddy. Is this your favorite? Yeah. The orange one? Yeah, I like the orange one. That's called pancetta. No, it's bacon. <laughs> oh, it's bacon, is it? I thought it was pancetta. Bacon. Oh, what do I know anyway? You want to try one? They're yummy. No. I understand. Look, it's vanilla ice cream with chocolate sauce. I don't like it. Now you mean. You can't win them all. <laughs> Cheers. Here's to adventure. Daddy, there's a toy